bonjour, and welcome to another episode of Métis Time Capsule. Of course, you're with your host, Alexandria Anthony. June, of course, is National Indigenous History Month, a great time to celebrate, share, educate, and really get out there and learn as much as you can about Métis culture, history, Indigenous Inuit culture and history, a, a great month to really share and educate yourself. Before we get into today's segment, some very sad news. Our Grant cousin, Sir James Grant, Lord Strathspey, has passed away May 26th, 2023. Our deepest condolences to Judy and the rest of Sir James Grant's family. And again, I had the huge honor and great privilege to meet Sir James Grant and Judy, uh, Winnipeg, uh, 2012, when he we invited him from Scotland to come to Winnipeg. It was the first time in Canadian history, folks, very exciting, where Sir James Grant brought official warrant papers from Scotland. And this is a tradition, folks, that goes way back to Viking times, brought those official warrant papers and made all of us descendants of Cuthbert Grant an official branch arm of Clan Grant in Scotland named Sol Cudbright, which is uh, an official branch. And I was so honored and privileged uh, to be named the official Sept Steward of Sol Cudbright. And a uh, huge privilege. Again, we were able to have Sir James Grant and Judy brought in on Red River carts uh, all the way to Grant's Old Mill. So this was an, a historic first for us. And it was really the bridging of the gap between the old world and the new world. And I'm going to read a quote from Sir James Grant that has really stuck in my mind. And I find it poignant. And it's very... Um, it says how it really is, and again, I quote, Just as when our forefathers came to Scotland in the 1050s, they brought, they both brought their own Viking culture with them and adopted that of the country in which they were making their home. So too you inherit the best both of Scotland with which Cuthbert was imbued and of the First Nations of Canada who welcome him and amongst whom he settled. End of quote. And I really think that speaks volumes of the link, of course, from the old world Scotland and the new world Canada, of course, my great, great, great grandfather Cuthbert Grant Sr. was, of course, a Scottish Highlander and a very important link to remember where we've come from. And this sort of brings part of the show again with June being national Indigenous History Month, remembering where we've come from. So again, it's very important. And I think uh, this story that we're going to speak of today speaks of that. And um, it's about the Massey Car Carrier, a Métis martyr. And we'll get more into what a martyr means in a minute. And it's really the battlefield torture. Uh, you know, that's, I'm going to state it exactly what it was. It was pure torture, of course, of Métis de Massé Carrier. And uh, for those who may not know, the battlefield torture of de Massé Carrier was one of the most 
horrendous. We're not going to sugarcoat it here, folks. It was one of the most horrendous events during the bitter struggle for the hereditary rights of the Métis as well as the Indians of the Saskatchewan. And what is a martyr? Let's go into that because some of us may not have a clear understanding of what a martyr is. A martyr really is someone who suffers severe persecution and death for advocating, renouncing, refusing to renounce, or refusing to advocate a belief or cause as determined by an external party. And in this particular case, folks, that external party is the Canadian colonial government. In the heroic Métis resistance during the Northwest resistance of 1885, there were at least 13, count them folks, 13. 18 Métis martyrs at Batoche, along with two or more Sioux who gave their lives in this battle against extreme Canadian colonialism. Many more men were tried and convicted of treason felony. Louis Riel, of course, was convicted of high treason and executed on November 16th, 1885. So let's go into the story. But before we go into this story, let's remember, let's honor, and let's pay homage to the list of names of the Métis martyrs of Batoche. And let's remember these names. Baptiste Boyer, Donald Ross, and of course, Damasse Carrier, Ambrose Jobin, Norbert Delorme, Moise Olet, Baptiste Parento, Pierre Henry, David Turon, Ore Gabri, Maxime Lepin, Albert Monkman, and Baptiste Boucher. For those who may not know, and this is where we can learn something, the Battle of Batoche was May 9th to May 12th, 1885. And it really, folks, let's put this into perspective. It really was the last major action of the Northwest Resistance under the leadership of, of course, Louis Riel. Métis and their First Nation allies were defeated by the Canadian colonial government troops. And an interesting perspective, folks, is some historians have really concluded that the Battle of Batoche is every bit as consequential as the 1876 Battle of the Little Bighorn, of course, in the United States. Under the leadership of Louis Riel, the Métis people and their allies, the First Nations, Cree, and Assiniboine, fought multiple battles to protect their, number one, rights, number two, their land, and number three, their culture. 300 Métis and First Nations led by Louis Riel and Gabriel Dumont fought a force of 800 men commanded by Major General Middleton, and uh, it's interesting that uh, Middleton reported eight deaths and 46 wounded, and uh, the Métis, uh, 16 Métis were killed, and 20 to 30 uh, were wounded. But let's go back into our uh, Métis time machine 
uh, let's backspace a bit and let's go back in time and let's just uh, uh, talk about Damase Carrier. So Damase Carrier was born at St. Vitel, Winnipeg in 1851. He, of course, was the son of L.A. Carrier and uh, Elmar Landry. Uh, February 10th, 1875, he married uh, Marie Parenteau of St. Laurent, and they settled at the St. Laurent on the South Saskatchewan in 1877, and uh, they also had five children. 1883, Carrier and Napoleon Nott, they traveled from Batoche to St. Boniface, to attend the wedding of Riel's sister Henrietta to Jean-Marie Portras. They, at this particular time, this, they took the opportunity at this particular event to discuss the Métis land claim problems in the Saskatchewan Valley with Riel. Both Napoleon and Damasse Carrier signed Gabriel Dumont's petition on Métis land claims from Saint Anton du Padou on September 4th, 1882. And it's also interesting to note that Damasse was part of the secret meeting on March 22nd, 1884, with 30 other Métis, and they really were there to discuss uh, a coordinated action on their land claims uh, with the white settlers and English uh, Métis. Damasse also was a member of Riel's council at Batoche during the 1885 resistance, and uh, his name appears as number 124 on Philippe Garneau's list of resistant uh, participants. Here, folks, is where the account gets horrific, it gets real, it gets brutal, but let's face it, folks, history is not always good. It's got the two sides of a coin, history is good and both bad, and we have to be able to tell both sides. Elie Dumont gives the following account of the fight at Tourance Cooley. They were surrounded on all sides except for the one facing Tourance house, for the enemy could not go that way without coming, of course, in full sight. And before sunset, Ellie hears a discharge. Um, he knows that the shot did not come from a carbine, but from a shotgun. He says to Damasse Carrier, and I quote, it must be our people who have come to help us, end of quote. They soon see them coming. They arrive, of course, at a gallop, and the police were already fleeing by companies. In the coulee, and at a short distance from the bluff, Hedward finds, in addition to a white mare belonging to the police, also a beautiful saddle, a sable, a saber, pardon me, and some bags containing soap, a towel, a razor, and rolls of white cotton. He keeps the saber only and gives the mare to Ellie, who returns to Batoche on it and says, I quote, I had lost my horse, but now I have a better one, end of quote, he says. And he goes on to say, and I quote, this animal is full of spirit, healthy, and seems to have been well fed with oats, end of quote. And of course, they look for a guns that are abandoned by the police along the coulee, and they are able, they manage to collect 32 rifles. It's interesting to note, of course, and we know that Damasse Carrier did fight in the 1885 Battle of Batoche, and this is where it gets horrific. This is where it gets, where we get the wording in horrific 
and the wording in torture because let's face it folks that is exactly what it was and on the very last day of the battle after receiving Damase here already has a broken leg so he's he's injured already he's got a broken leg the English tie a cord around his neck and they literally drag him behind a horse until he was dead. This is horrific. This is torture. There is no other way to put it, folks. Emmanuel Champlain reports these events. While part of the English troops descended by Charles Thomas's place, another group came straight down on Batoche's store. There, the two Torrents, de Massey Carrier and André Le Tendre, were killed. The English had come upon the Torrents and the others by stealing through the woods and emerging upon them unexpectedly. The latter were ten yards away when shot, and it was like shooting a rabbit in its legs. What a terminology to use, saying like shooting a rabbit in its leg. Here's where it's key, folks. De Massey Carrier was literally mistaken for Louis Riel. So here you have colonial government Canadian troops who are mistaking or mistaken De Massey Carrier for Louis Riel. And again, the horrific battlefield torture where you have the English tying a rope around his neck and dragging him behind a horse until he is dead. Of course, Trottier had only been wounded. Um, Carrier, his body was found at Karen's. Um, the women found him the next day with his hands still clenched tightly. Can you feel that clenching tightly around the rope that literally strangled him? Horrific battlefield torture. And again, it's recounted as saying that um, the troops did this. They did this horrific battlefield torture where they tied a rope around his neck and they dragged him behind a horse until he was dead because they had mistaken de Massé for Louis Riel. Again, uh, when the women looked for the bodies, they came upon de Massé and of course they found him again. And I got to keep saying it because it's so horrific with a cord around his neck and they could literally see the mark where he was dragged into the bush on the side of um, the prairie. So here you have folks the story of de Massey Carrier born 1851 dying uh, May 12th 1885 aged about 33, 34, being tortured, being horrifically tortured by Canadian colonial troops that had mistaken him for Louis Riel. When, again, the Métis, under the leadership of Louis Riel, were fighting multiple battles to protect their rights, to protect their land to protect their culture. So on this National Indigenous History Month, it's so important to remember individuals as de Massey Carrier, a Métis martyr who was literally tortured by Canadian colonial troops because he was mistaken for mistaken for Louis Riel. And it's sad too that de Massey Carrier is buried at Saint Antoine du Padre Roman Catholic Cemetery, 
Batosh, Saskatchewan, in a mass grave. So again, folks, stories like these martyrs that have fought for our rights, for our land, for our culture, should never be forgotten. These are stories that must be told, must be remembered. These horrific events. History has two sides like a coin. There's good and bad. We've got to remember them both. So thank you for tuning in to this episode. Again, June is National Indigenous History Month. And again, our sincere condolences to the family of Sir James Grant, Lord Strathspey, who passed away May 26th, 2023. We will all miss you, our Grant cousin, and uh, rest in peace, and thank you for the inspiration, and thank you for helping us bridge the gap between the old world and the new world. Take care.